My name is Kui Ren, and I'm currently an associate professor from SUNY Buffalo. Um, today I'm going to talk about our work on rise of the indoor crowd, re reconstruction of building interior view via mobile crowdsourcing. And the first two student authors, they cannot come due to the visa issue, so I'm presenting for them. So if I present it well, I take all the credit, and if I don't, blame him. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I studied the idea of this project about like three years ago, but my background is not really in the sensing system, so I'll progress uh, a little bit slow. So here's the outline of the talk, and we start from the introduction, basically the motivation of the work, and then we will talk about the system model, the design details, and how we evaluated our system, followed by the concluding remarks. So the idea really is to establish large-scale information infrastructure in the area of IoT, right? We already have very great projects such as Google Street View, so that you can see from these slides, you have specialized cars driving all over the world, and you establish this um, great infrastructure so that people can develop a lot of new applications on top of it, right? So now, given the advancement of the different sensors, and we are entering the era of internet of everything, right? So we thought that, hey, might, this might be the best time for us to leverage all this technology advancement so that we can establish different large-scale information infrastructure, as that was my, that is my motivation. Then, of course, we look at the um, Google Street View and we look, think about, hey, how about we do something similar for the indoor environment, right? then can we just directly apply the current uh, techniques and data collection approach just to the indoor environment without much uh, effort. But actually, we cannot but be because when you look at it, you find that, okay, indoor environment no normally, right? We don't have the localization or GPS infrastructure, right? And also the indoor environment is much more complex and we have much more quantity as compared to the outdoor street case. So that's basically is the state of the art, right? When you examine it, existing outdoor street view reconstruction techniques either cannot be directly applied to the indoor environment or are prohibitively costly. They just do not scale. And of course, then our motivation is to, we want to develop a practical approach to establish building interior views at large scale. Okay, so that's the motivation of this project. We had like a little bit more than three years ago. So here's a related work. So we, build, we, we search the literature and we want to know, hey, uh, where are we now and what are the techniques we can use to build up uh, our system? So the first thing is, of course, the SLAM, right? Simultaneous localization and mapping for the indoor scenario. You have a special device equipped with all these high resolution cameras, laser sensors. Right, and you move around and you get the, normally you can get 3D point cloud and use that, you can reconstruct the, uh, uh, the indoor structure, okay? But obviously, if you look at this, it's simply just uh, not scale, it's, you need a specialized device and uh, uh, the approach is just too costly if you think about how many rooms around the global, right? So then, of course, another approach is from the vision com community, right? You have structure for motion, you have multi-view multi stereo, right? Basically, you have a bunch of uh, pictures re related to the same building, and so that this is the kind of algorithm and approach you run, so that it will give you a grouped, uh, aggregated view about the building structure, okay? But normally, it does not work very well for the indoor scenario, okay, as we will see. Uh, so that's about the, the, the type of related work we are looking at, right? The, the, it, either from the robotics community or from the uh, vision community. And here's our approach. We think that, okay, because the existing approach, they do not scale and they are costly. So we want to get access to the large quantity of the manpower and the devices and the coverage. And the best approach for that is cross-sourcing, right? We have so many smart devices, we have so many people, 
And if they want to, if they voluntarily, they opportunistically contribute whatever they can sense for the indoor environment and give that information to us, then we can leverage all this information to establish the indoor view uh, from our perspective. Right? We already know that the current smart devices, they have a lot of different sensors. Right? They can capture the environment based on the camera. They also uh, can record the accelerometer, gyroscope, all these sort of different information, which might be useful when you actually reconstruct the indoor uh, structure. Okay, so we developed a system called Indoor Cloud 2D, and it is a smart device enveloped, uh, enabled system, utilizes the power of the cloud to reconstruct the building interior views at large scale. So basically, you have the large number of users, they use their own device, we don't train them, right? They just need to install our mobile app, and they collect the information voluntarily and opportunistically, and upload that information to the cloud. And then we have a cloud backend to construct the indoor views, right? The mobile crowdsourcing, of course, we rely on off-the-shelf devices, nothing special, right? It's software only, so it large quantity, you can instantly access to a large number of such devices, and it's relatively low cost for obvious reasons. And the cloud reconstruction is, is good because we design in such a fashion that uh, it allows gradual building up of the indoor view, and it robust to the noisy data, and it is scalable. Okay, and that's the overview of the system. And what is the output? The output at this point is two things, other two things, right? The first is a panoramic image for visualizing the building interior views, and the other one is a navigable hallway skeletons for each building floors. And in the future, of course, we want to do better, but that's the current system uh, output. So we both have the building interior view and the building skeleton, okay? So that's the output of the system. So now we move on to the model, so you have the general idea, right? So we want to do the mobile cross-sourcing, and we use a cloud to process the collected data from the user, and then we output the panoramic views and the building skeleton, which is navigable. So now the model of the system. So in order to do that, we have to make some assumptions, and we uh, here are the following. The first model is indoor spatial model. Okay, first we want to base our, our re Result on, we want to consider, you know, a, a trackable problem. So at this point, we consider reduced Manhattan world assumption. Basically, we assume two perpendicular dominant axes for each building. Each nine segment, most corridors inside the building is aligned with one of the two axes, and the, this dominant axis are used to initialize the indoor spatial model. So basically, what we do is that we search the Google uh, map, right? And then we get the upside shape of the building, and from that building, we assume that there are the dominant axes. You might ask, there are buildings which do not fall into this uh, uh, category, right? There are buildings with different uh, structures. Uh, that's true, so currently we cannot deal with that, but that's our uh, current work. So basically, we utilize a Google map to identify the building, and for the building we find, we want to identify the dominant axis, and that's the base for the, uh, uh, our indoor spatial model. And then, from that, we try to represent the indoor environment by a homogeneous uh, grid system. And the size of the grid is a system parameter based on this uh, reduced Manhattan world uh, assumption. And basically, we store the user trajectory information by normalizing it to the grid system. So you see, this is a random user working trajectory, and this is a normalized uh, uh, trajectory based on the grid system. So we do not assume any indoor localization infrastructure. Okay. Next, we want to model the uh, user trajectory. So we define a customized image vector data structure to include both the user movement information obtained from the sensory data and the corresponding image data when shooting. Okay, so not only the image data, but also the corresponding sensory data. And then, particularly, we define the data structure called image vector bundle. Each IVB corresponds to a user's movement during one camera shooting session. And it includes relative spatial location, 
heading direction image data and timestamp. So you have this, you move when you shoot, and then this is a normalized um, trajectory, and this is what you get, okay? So this is basically uh, each direction you, you might travel through multiple uh, cells, okay? So for each image vector, this is a bundle, okay? So basically you have both the image data and the sensory data, and for, from that you can derive magnitude and direction. Uh, information like that. So now this is the architecture of the uh, Indoor Cloud 2D. So basically we have a mobile front end. We develop a mobile app which is installed on the user's mobile devices and there, there it defines the data acquisition interfaces. And then uh, we have the cloud backend. So basically the cloud backend takes the uploaded data from the user to process it and eventually output the hallway skeleton and the interior view. Okay, and this is uh, architecture. So that's basically about setting up the model and the architecture. Here comes the uh, design details. So basically we, we, we describe the system from the three aspects and you can read the details from the paper. And so the first is user data collection and we will describe how, how the, the general approach that we have. And then it's of course cloud-based trajectory aggregation and after the trajectory aggregation, we will steer the cloud-based indoor interior view generation. That is the output of the system. And here you go. The first user data collection. So basically users with their mobile devices choose to shoot the environment voluntarily and opportunistically. So you can eat and stand there and turn around or you just free move, right? And our phone apps takes pictures and records the sensory data to capture camera positions and directions and information like that. So this basically X and Y is a 2D um, uh, physical flow and T is just uh, the time, okay. And then we know that the cross source data is inherently incomplete, right? You might just shoot for a while and then, then you don't. And it's opportunistic and it's noisy. So our app try to guide the user data connection through a real-time data quantity feedback. Okay, so basically we measure three uh, metrics during the shooting, right? The first is a linear acceleration and angular acceleration. If we move too fast, we will just give you a hint that you should move slowly, slower, right? And we also, you know, analyze the pictures being taken each pic. We analyze, hey, how, how, how many uh, number of uh, surf features we can get. If you are shooting completely white wall, there's no feature, so that, that's not something useful. So we might give you a hint that uh, want you to shoot somewhere else, right? So that uh, the data is useful. So basically this app is integrated with this kind of real-time quality feedback mechanism. So now, Every user, when they use their mobile phone using our app to collect those data, and they obviously, they could do it offline, right? You don't have to up upload up, uh, in real time whenever you have the Wi-Fi connection outside the battery. So uh, we also have the uh, data in the paper that how does our app cost the, the, the power and that kind of information, but skipped here due to the uh, lack of uh, time. So now cloud, have, cloud has all the uploaded information from the user, okay? So that's the starting point at, at the cloud side. So it will map user uploaded data into image vector bundles, so using two information. The first is step counting approach is applied to measure the distance using the sensory data, okay? And the other one is the relative speed of the motion of the user between two images and based on optical flow. And then we combine the two results and try to get a better result. So, and the two results are combined to use a wet factor. And in our experiment, we found that uh, normally uh, the sensory data is 0 0.8 and the optical flow data result is 0 0.2, okay. And then after you convert the user uploaded data to the image vector bundles, and now the cloud try to you know, aggregate them, 
right? You have multiple individuals, and they shoot the things from different locations. As you get the data, and you try to match them, and eventually, hopefully, if the data is complete, you can give out, you know, eventually generate the complete skeleton for the whole flow. So then, we, of course, we start from the two IVBs. You have two. You want to match them. We first want to find the matching point. We construct a code book of visual features using surf for every image. Okay? Then for each visual feature descriptor, find the nearest visual feature descriptors in the other code book, basically. And then you have a threshold value. You count the number of uh, valid, uh, threshold, uh, valid descriptors. Right? And if you do, then you can see that, hey, these two IVBs does, uh, do have a match point. Okay? Then you, you do for the whole thing, IVB, and you find, hey, if uh, we have multiple matching points, then we can calculate so-called common paths between two IVBs based on the longest common subsequence metric. Okay, and if we do, we can merge the two IVBs to a larger one. Okay, basically, that's the approach. Then, of course, you have multiple user trajectories, right? So we first sort them based on the length and the entry sequence of each IVB. Then we perform the two user trajectory aggregation approach we just described. And if the, there is a match, we generate the aggregated merged IVB, right? And if not, then we change the entry sequence of the two IVBs and we per process the remaining ones. So basically, we repeat the whole thing and until everything is being uh, processed. So here is a result of basically we have four, 425 IVBs and, and then corresponding to the same building flow. And then we basically uh, try run the algorithm here and try to aggregate them. And this is the final result that we get. Okay. Then after you suppose the data is sufficient, and after you aggregate the whole thing about the flaw, of course, you, you, if you don't have the complete data, you get pieces. And some pieces are large, some pieces are smaller. That's fine. You know, you just get an incomplete view. So suppose you get the whole thing, and now we try to generate the indoor interior view the whole, uh, from the aggregated IVB. Okay. So the cloud first select the images from each grid cell from the aggregated IVB. Okay. So from each grid cell, because as we said, we have the spatial model, which is a grid system with the grid size uh, being a system parameter. So and from that particular cell, we want to select the images. And these images should be having the viewing direction cover the scene in a wide angle, right? Because we want, uh, for example, if we want a 180 degree from this, if you want to generate a 180 degree panorama. And every two images should have appropriate overlap part. So that's the, the criteria there that how we select the images among each cell. And sometimes they don't, right? You don't have them. Then you just wait. So unless, until you have enough number of images. And then from that, the cloud further processes the second images using our data building uh, interior view generation algorithm. So basically you take the images, you run the surf and uh, feature matching modular, and then you do the inline pair match estimation modular basically based on RANSAC, and then this is the generated panorama. Okay, so this is just the combination of the uh, state of the art, and the input is the selected images from a grid cell. The output is an interactive panorama, and here's a result, an example, right? So the first, when you do, you, these are two images. You use surf to find the feature points matching, and then you do the pairwise match estimation, run through that module, and eventually you can get this um, generated panorama. So that's about the design, okay? And for the more detailed information, you can read the paper. And now comes to the system evaluation. So basically, here are the data set and the computing resources. So we did the experiment on two campus building floors, and these are, we, we have like uh, more than five, uh, 50,000 images from uh, 1,151 data set uploaded by 25 untrained users. 
And these are the distribution of the images. We have the room, we have the corridor, we have the open area, we have the wing intersection. These are the distribution. And basically the cloud-based reconstruction is implemented on Microsoft Azure platform. And we have 16 cores and 112 gigabyte of memory. So, and we got a grant from uh, Microsoft, which is more than uh, 55K USD, and basically we pretty much spent all our money on this project. Okay. So now the evaluation metrics. So basically we define, I mean, the precision, recall, and F measure. So, and we compare with the ground truth. Okay. So here's the result. So the first three figures are basically for the, um, one building and the other for additional, another building. So basically we compare with image only based approach. You can see our approach combine both image data and sensory data consistently performs better than image only approaches. Okay, so that's the, the, the basic idea you get. Uh, and this is just uh, compared to the ground truth panorama and the panorama that we generate. You see, Still pretty high quality, but at places you have distortions and you have the uh, uncovered areas because you have no control about the uh, cross source data. So I guess that's about it. Uh, here are some remarks. So we want the uh, cross sourcing system empowered by off the shelf smartphones for building interior view reconstructions. And they are readily deployable. And um, you both get an indoor panorama for each grid cell. And you, get, you also get a navigable uh, skeleton for the floor plan. And I, I think in the future we want to do the 3D model, but it is really, really hard. And also, of course, our immediate goal is to relax the uh, reduced Manhattan world assumption so that we can deal with more complex building structures. And uh, we feel that um, this is a, uh, it's a good project that uh, realizing that um, Beforehand, we cannot establish large-scale information infrastructure easily, but now with the uh, IoT and uh, the penetration of the mobile devices and also the UAVs, right, we can do something at a much larger scale uh, than ever. So that's basically my talk, and thank you. <laughs>